Hello, I'm Brad Myers, and I'm going to be presenting the user interface for Sapphire, a window manager for the PERC personal workstation. The PERC has special hardware to make graphics run quickly on its high-resolution bitmap screen. Sapphire was designed to run under the Accent multi-processing operating system. Accent was de designed by Carnegie Mellon University and PERC Systems Corporation. Sapphire was designed to allow both users and application programs a high degree of power and flexibility. Sapphire uses icons in novel ways to allow the user to more effectively monitor and control multiple processes running at the same time. The user interface to Sapphire was designed to be easy to use for novices, but it provides accelerators for experts. This is a typical Sapphire screen. First, I'll present how the windows are displayed in Sapphire. And next, I'll be talking about how the user can give commands to manipulate the windows. As you can see, there are multiple windows here, and they can overlap. The parts that are covered do not show through. I'll be explaining later some commands that you can use for displaying the parts that are covered. Windows can be partially or totally off screen. You can see that this window is off screen to the left. And I can move it so it'll be off screen to the top. This is useful if it contains information that you're not particularly interested in right now. The windows have title lines which display state information, such as the current directory or the program being run, etc. There are a number of windows here, but there's only one keyboard on the perk. Therefore, we have to identify which window is getting typing from the keyboard. Some systems call this the active window, but since we have many windows actively displaying at the same time, we have coined a different term. We call it the listener, since it's listening to the keyboard. The listener window is identified by having its entire border surrounded by a gray area. This seems to be fairly easy to see and is much more noticeable than just highlighting the title line especially if the title line is entirely off the screen. The most important aspect of the presentation of windows in Sapphire is the novel use of icons. Each window is associated with one icon. The icons provide more information than just a cute picture, although arbitrary application-defined pictures are certainly allowed. Users will often be running multiple tasks at the same time. This allows them to achieve a much higher efficiency but the user can easily lose track of what he's doing. The typical icon in Sapphire, therefore, provides eight pieces of process and window state information. I will expand this icon so that we can look at what this is. The border of the icon is shown in gray, the same as the window, if it corresponds to the listener. This bug appears if there's been an error in the process. The keyboard appears if the process is waiting for some kind of user interaction. And the exclamation point appears if the application wants the user's attention for some reason. For example, the mail program exhibits the exclamation point when new mail arrives. The actual pictures used can be specified by the application program. Underneath is the name of the process being run. Here we see that the editor has used this space to also show the name of the file being processed. Underneath are two percent done progress bars. These are used to show what percent of the job has been completed. For example, down here we can see that this represents the compiler about, what, 40 percent done on the file sketch. The second bar is used for aggregates such as command files. This tells you what percent of the entire job has been completed. Most application programs will be able to tell what percent of the job they have completed. But if not, we provide random progress. We feel that this will make it the users feel much better about the system since they'll be able to tell when their programs are running and that they haven't crashed. And also, they can plan their time much more effectively by using the information about when jobs will be completed. 
The final piece of information in the icon is this ellipsis, which shows whether the window has been sent off screen or not. Since the icons provide so much useful information, we'd like them to dis be displayed all the time, and not just when the window is invisible like in most systems. Therefore, icons are associated with windows in Sapphire rather than being an alternative representation for windows. To manipulate the icons, they're grouped in this icon window, which can be covered and manipulated just like any other window. For example, I might like to move the icons to the side of the screen. Some users might not like icons at all, and in that case, I can simply get rid of them off the screen altogether. If the icon window fills up, it will automatically grow to make room for the new icons. Although icons are small, they are easy to interpret, and the user can tell the state of his entire system and which processes need his attention simply by looking at the icons on the screen. The next important part of the user interface of Sapphire is the commands that the user can give to manipulate the windows. The goal in designing these commands was to provide a good user interface without restricting application programs. The perk comes with a variety of pointing devices, this one being the most typical. Each of these devices has a different number of buttons, and we didn't want to reserve any of the buttons for Sapphire. So application programs, when they are the listener, can use all buttons. To give window manager commands, you press in a window that's not the listener, or you press in a title line of a window. In order to change the listener, for example, you press down in a window that's not the listener. The cursor changes to show a keyboard. When you let up, the command is executed. In some window managers, moving the cursor out of the window is sufficient to change the listener. But in Sapphire, we require explicit press to change the listener. We think this is better for a number of reasons. First of all, the pointer might be accidentally knocked, and you'll give the commands to the wrong window. Sometimes it's important and useful to be able to give commands even when you're not in the window. For example, here we have rubber band lines that are operating even though we're moving outside the window. Also, if we want to move this window, if we want to pull, we need to be able to go outside the window and continue. To give other window manager commands, you can use the pop-up menu. This is fairly typical of most window managers. However, pop-up menus are fairly slow and cumbersome, and users would prefer not to use them if there's a faster way. Sapphire provides two different sets of accelerators that allow experts to give the most common commands much faster. The first set of accelerators is from the pointing device. Here, if you press in the title line of a window, you can execute a command. We've divided the title line into three areas, left, middle, and right. But since a window is often covered on one end or the other, we provide the same function at both ends of the title line. The user might forget what commands go in which area of the title line with which buttons. So we provide feedback in the cursor picture. When you press down, you get a picture showing what will happen. And when you let up, the command is executed. If you don't want to give the command, you can simply pull away, and it'll be aborted. And the experts then can just press down and release. and novices can press down and confirm all commands. 
The actual assignment of commands to buttons and areas is user-defined. This is important for flexibility, and for left-handed people, for example, will probably want to reverse the assignment. Also, you need to define the appropriate commands based on whatever kind of pointing device you have. The default assignments for the three-button puck are as follows. With the left button, you get top, full screen, and top again. The full screen operation is very useful if you want to get more context, say, in an editing session. The middle command gives bottom, back from full screen or off screen, and bottom command. When you go to full screen, the original position is remembered and if you give the back, if you give this command, it will go back to its original position. Similarly, if it's already in its original position and you give this command, the window will be sent entirely off screen. This is useful for uncluttering the windows, uncluttering the screen of lots of windows. With the right button, we get the pop-up menu you saw before, move grow, and the pop-up menu again. After issuing the move grow command, the borders of the window are highlighted with control points. The white ones are grow points and the black ones are move points, but if the user doesn't remember, of course, there are pictures to show what will happen. It's useful to be able to move a window from various positions so that you can get them off screen. Similarly, you might want to go a window from various points in order to line it up with other windows or get it out of the way. To an abort any command once it's started, you simply have to hit a keyboard key. It's also possible to give commands from the icons. The icons are fairly small, so we don't divide them into different areas. With the three button puck, the commands are as follows. The left button does top, back from off screen, and listener all at once. This is probably the most popular command. I can bring the window we sent off screen back that way. The middle button identifies which window goes with this icon. This works even if the window is partially off screen or if it's covered. It shows where the full extent of the window is. The right button gets the pop-up menu that we saw before. Again, it's only necessary to move away to abort a command. The second set of accelerators available to users are from the keyboard. Some people don't like to use the pointing device at all. In addition, it's much faster to use the keyboard command than the pop-up menu for the commands that aren't available from the title line. Since there are lots of commands, however, and we don't want to reserve them from applications, we use a prefix key, and only this key has to be reserved. The prefix key is also useful if the application program has prevented the cursor from being used normally. Gridding is very useful in order to draw things more accurately, but it might be the case that we can't get to a title line because it skips over it based on gridding. Also, an application program may be perverse and trap the cursor. And then no matter how hard we try, we can't get it out. Another possibility is that it might want to allow you to draw very detailed drawings, but then it might take forever to move the cursor to where you want to get it. If you give the prefix key, you get the sapphire cursor, which tells you that you can then give commands normally. What, some of the commands you can give from the keyboard, you can change the listener, and you can give the other commands that we've demonstrated. Also from the keyboard, there's a help command 
which generates a window in the center of the screen that describes the various options and commands. The help command, of course, is also available from the pop-up menu. In conclusion, Sapphire provides a number of innovations in window management and user interface design. Icons are used in a novel way to enhance the user's productivity when multitasking. The icons present eight pieces of process and window state information to help the user more effectively monitor and control multiple processes running at the same time. The user interface to Sapphire is flexible and powerful for both novices and experts. All commands are available from pop-up menus, but accelerators allow the experts to give commands with a single button press or with a few keyboard keys. The picture in the tracking symbol changes to show which command is going to be given next, providing appropriate feedback. The interface to Sapphire promotes experimentation because of this feedback and because it's always easy to abort commands. This flexibility has been provided without restricting application programs to one style of interaction or to a predefined analogical view of the system. Thank you.